So, hello, Megan. How are you doing? Hi, Nicholas. I'm well. How are you? I'm fine as well. And like usually, we are broadcasting from our small studio in Lüneburg. Um, yeah, um, um, smaller size town in Germany, close to the to the coast here in the north of Germany. So my first question is, where are you located today? I am based in Seattle today in the Pacific Northwest in the United States. Okay, so it's pretty early on your end. We are just getting our day started over here, yes. Okay, so we are nearly done and the weekend is uh, right before us, but you have um, a funny Friday and then of course two days of the weekend as well before you. Yes, and I'm looking forward to it. It's going to be a beautiful weekend here in Seattle. Okay, perfect. Um, so let's talk about wireless IoT. Let's talk about Impinch. Let's talk about the wireless IoT tomorrow, 2023, where Impinch um, is not not a regular sponsor, but a very specific sponsor, a partner network sponsor of the event already for the second time now. And I'm looking forward to find out more about Impinch in general, but also how Impinch is contributing to the event and what partner network means especially, how Impinch is defining it. So if you are ready, should we start already with the first question? Yes, let's do it. Okay, so different to the last years, for this first question block, we have a um, specific task for you. If possible, please answer in just two sentences. Let's see how this is going. Okay, here's already <laughs> the first question. If you could make the world more sustainable, what would you have changed immediately? I would love to see better markets for the reselling of used goods. I think I have the sense that Europe is leading in this space already and the United States is catching up, but has some more room to go. Okay. Okay. I think I, I'm not quite sure if Europe is leading here, but even if there is definitely still work to do in Europe as well, that, that's a very, very important, interesting point. Yeah, absolutely. To be more, um, yeah, kind of respectful with the resources we are using. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, let's do the second one. Connecting all objects to the IoT means creating the world as a digital twin. Do you agree with this? So at Impinge, we see a digital twin as a universally unique digital identifier that's associated with more information about that item that would be stored online. So our digital twins could serve as inputs into bigger, bigger digital twin systems. For example, in the manufacturing industry, a digital twin is like ideally an exact replica of a real product in the digital space that's used to simulate performance in different conditions. So as you start to stitch together these different digital twin systems, you create valuable operational, uh, operational insights, more accurate predictions, for example. Right. Okay. Okay. So let's talk about the third question. Um, 2023 is a challenging year because the industry is weakening worldwide. What is your forecast for the growth of RAIN RFID? We see that the market drivers and the use cases haven't changed. The demand is still there. Um, in fact, it feels like the past few years have actually made these market drivers even more relevant. We still need automation. We still need inventory accuracy. Sustainability, obviously, is a huge motivator for RAIN or FID technology. Right. Maybe we need it even more now than ever because there's so much pressure to be even more effective to, to face the challenges of today and to drive innovation. I agree. Okay, so thank you for this first insights. Um, let's talk about Impinch. So what unique qualities set your company apart from the dynamic wireless IoT industry? Impinge is a company of innovators. We always have been. Um, we really deeply value our partners and we work to build strong relationships that drive that innovation. 
The mm -hmm. Impinge platform uh, is ensuring that partners and our end customers have RAIN RFID-based solutions that are delivering real-time data on all kinds of items um, and that link that data to businesses and to consumer applications. Right. Okay. Okay. So in, in the first block, we already talked about the challenging times, but I would like to now focus on how much potential could be set free. So my question would be how much unused potential could be unlocked by using wireless IoT technologies for small, middle and large companies? So the visibility that wireless IoT technologies like RAIN RFID give businesses unlocks huge potential. So one of the great things about RAIN, for instance, is that the more items you tag, the more you can do. It starts with inventory visibility, but it builds very quickly to automation, forecasting, sustainability, that list goes on. Um, and that's available to companies of all sizes. Okay, so thank you very much for for this answer. Just one one question: Would you say that it's um, in our times, with all the advantages that we saw, all the developments during the last years, that it's um, like you said, equally possible for small, middle-sized companies compared to larger ones? It's 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 the point I want to do. Uh, I want to make is that it's getting easier for everybody. I think so. I think so. Right now, the the systems have been proven at scale mm -hmm. by many large companies around the world. And I think medium size and small businesses are seeing that potential and realizing that it's also available to them. Uh, right. The price points are, are becoming more accessible to companies of all sizes. Right. So if you are working in a, a maybe smaller company or even middle sized, um, the solutions and products exactly for you are out there and they are uh, working. OK, um, perfect. Now let's let's jump to the future. I know these kind of questions are uh, are hard. You don't have um, a magic bulb that shows how the future will look like. But nevertheless, here's the question. Looking ahead, where do you envision your company in the next five years? And what significant projects or innovations might we expect? Well, besides trying to make that magic ball that can predict the future, uh, there's plenty that's unknown about the future. So what we can say right now is that there is already a very strong interest in sustainability and how Rain RFID can enable the sustainability of everyday items. Looking beyond um, the the retail apparel industry where our technology is is very well deployed we're also seeing interest in being able to tag new categories of items so for example mm -hmm. in the food industry which presents um, interesting new challenges such as packaging that is uh, metallic or right. items that are uh, have a high water content or lossy dielectrics that detune the rain RFID tags. So this provides a lot of opportunity for innovation, especially when you think about them combined with uh, some of the market drivers I mentioned before. Right. OK. OK. So um, we already heard now um, um, for different questions, the key word sustainability. Um, I would be interested um, for the last question. We looked into the future. Now, let's let's talk about the past and especially the past of Impinge. Could you please give us a brief overview of your company's evolution with a focus on how you've adapted to sustainable change? Since Impinge's founding, which was just over 20 years ago, Impinge has valued sustainability. We see it as our responsibility to set the trajectory of RAIN RFID in the direction that will support sustainable initiatives like the circular economy. And 
as rain tagging has grown, so too has the desire for sustainability enabling products. So we're proud to have worked closely with our partners to develop rain based sustainability solutions. And we see those partnerships as an important way to drive our core value. So as a company, we've ingrained sustainability initiatives into how we do business. Um, for example, sustainable products for our offices. Okay, okay, well understood. Um, so something that is that is driving the company, not just a project or a to do on a list, but more like um, something that is lived with passion. Yes, foundational to the way we work. Right. Okay. Okay. Understood. Um, yeah, no, you already mentioned uh, a very important key point that we will come to later on, and that is the partner network. I um, already started to talk about it in the beginning, but it is very important, and therefore we will focus on it later on. Uh, but for now, we focus on another very important key topic, and that is RAIN RFID and the combination with sustainability and how RAIN RFID can contribute to um, a sustainable or more sustainable future. So my first question would be, what does RAIN RFID have to do with sustainability? It's a really good question. So first, Rain RFID enables efficiencies within the supply chain. So for example, mm -hmm. today, Rain enables sustainability first by having increased inventory accuracy. So what that means is we can significantly reduce the size of safety stocks that um, companies are carrying in their back rooms. That way, we're not overproducing items. We're able to sell more with less Uh, put another way we're able to sell down to the last item. Okay. Also today, rain reduces uncertainty around supply demand, because again, you have that inventory accuracy, you're able to track items as they move through your supply chain. And this is important because that uncertainty is again, a huge driver to the size of safety stocks that companies through the supply chain need to carry in order to meet that uncertainty around mm -hmm. how much uh, inventory is actually needed. The second thing that RAIN has to do with its sustainability is looking towards the future. As products hit the end of their natural lives, we see RAIN as an enabler for the circular economy. RAIN can support, for example, the responsible end of life for those items, whether those items are going for reuse or whether they're going for disposal and recycling. So one example is tags that are actually embedded within the items themselves. So if you look, for example, at textile garments, this is a huge opportunity to enable the circular economy where the RAIN tag embedded in the item lives with that item from its original manufacturing at the garment manufacturer all the way through the its use with the consumer to that garment's end of life and supports as that garment moves towards either reuse or recycle. Now, some examples of Impinge partners um, that have developed embedded textile tags include Avery Denison, uh, HID, and Prima 1D. Okay, so you just mentioned three companies and I have to add this information. They are also um, exhibitors at the Wireless IoT Tomorrow 2023 and part of the Impinge Partner Network team. So make sure to stop at those companies, but there are even more, which I will uh, name later on, but you already get an understanding of um, what the Impinge Partner Network is capable of, what they can do. And I think we, um, you very well explained where um, advantages are so if we we already talked about the potential of um, of wireless IOT um, that is more general but now to be even more specific how much potential cut could be unlocked by using rain RFID for small middle and large companies Yes, I recently conducted a literature review of, of peer-reviewed academic articles. I reviewed over 70 articles. And in that literature review, I found some really interesting studies coming out of the University of Parma by Professor Botany. And what they found is um, they were able to actually measure and quantify some of the reductions in safety stock that can be uh, enabled by RAIN RFID throughout the supply chain. So they found 
found, for example, that through the employment of RAIN RFID, a, a manufacturer could reduce their safety stock by 85%. Uh, a distributor could reduce their safety stock by 55%. Another study by the University of Parma found that there can be up to a 55% reduction in the standard deviation, which is the variability of the demand for the manufacturer. And again, that uncertainty drives the size of the safety stock that they need to carry. Right. Uh, in a different study, also out of the University of Parma, they focused on how RAIN can enable the, uh, the following of proper inventory management methods. So, for example, first in, first out, or FIFO, is an important inventory management method for the food, food items. And it's difficult to enact without digital identifiers. And if, you, if you're not able to follow the FIFO method correctly that can result in mo more waste from the expiration of perishable goods. So what they found is that RAIN RFID can help avoid 2.6% of inventory that would otherwise be lost due to expiration, just simply by enabling mm. that proper implementation of the FIFO inventory management. Uh, when they look to understand for in a specific case of how tagging every case of milk cartons impacts uh, the loss of milk inventory due to expiration. What they found was that if you tag every case of 12 cartons of milk with RAIN RFID, the environmental benefit is five times. It offsets the carbon footprint of the tag itself. And what's saved by the avoidance of the expiration of that milk, the total carbon saving is five times. Mm -hmm. So that's really exciting. And now that's at case level tagging. But we see as we continue to reduce the carbon footprint of the tags themselves, that will even further motivate the uh, individual item level tagging, which will further reduce expiration of these perishable goods. And there's a number of partners uh, that do have green uh, RAIN RFID product lines. So for example, Avery Denison, Beyond Tag, Identive, and Tagios all have very exciting uh, green inlay and label lines today. Very impressive numbers um, that uh, you were just dropping. Um, absolutely um, eye-opening how much potential um, um, could be unlocked, how easier um, the business could be operating when you know exactly what you have, what you need, who needs it, how much um, logistics could be saved. Uh, how much products just get lost yeah just to have a smart process absolutely um under um understandable very very impressive and the companies you were just naming are of course also exhibitors i think you're very well prepared for um for our talk today this can be a co coincidence but you can find <laughs> all of these companies in the um, exhibition area and most of them will also give even more detailed expert lectures for example impinge itself as well um also which we can talk about later as well so be prepared to not only meet the experts at the booth live, but also to join in and listen to the lectures, what these companies have to share. Um, yeah, thank you very much for these, um, for this, um, uh, for this feedback, for, for this question. Um, I think what, what stands out is that not only, um, the positive benefits for um, for the world in in terms of how sustainable the solution is but also to combining it with um w with a well operating business because you are not losing um items you are not storing items you don't need you just have exactly what you need at the time you need it in order to sell it and that's just a very optimized way um, so you just mentioned very, very impressive numbers. Um, are there even further examples that you can think of? 
Yes. Avery Dennison recently published a very interesting report called The Missing Billions. Some of the highlights that I took away from that report is they found that companies believe their sustainability impact comes from their supply chain operations and that waste-free processes are a top way for businesses to make an impact as they're looking to address climate change. This, the study, the report from Avery Dennison had one really interesting quote from a company that's currently deploying RFID, where they said, in hindsight, they're seeing RFID is reducing waste for them. But that company said that that's not currently how RFID is being framed. We're focused mostly on, mm -hmm. for example, inventory management and inventory accuracy, but that there is this very strong and compelling uh, case that RAIN RFID helps with sustainability sustainability and reducing waste overall. Absolutely. Let's let's add this big advantage to the list of advantages of RFID. Um, yeah. Very, also, I have to repeat myself. Very impressive point. Yes. Yeah. Thank you very much. And that brings me already to the third question. What are some examples of the influence of RAIN RFID on sustainable processes? I think you already talked about um, uh, one or two, but do you have uh, another example? Yes, I would love to build that out a little bit more. Please. So when we think about um, sustainable processes, your mind immediately, my mind at least, immediately goes to the end of life of everyday items and how do we responsibly dispose of those items. So most items can go for either resale or when they go to disposal, is there a way that we can ensure that they're appropriately recycled? Hmm. So in the case of resale, RAIN RFID can help with that process. It can authenticate the item. It can provide information about the history of the item. So for example, this was the original sales price. It gives you a sense of what might you might be able to sell that item now for its second life. It can also identify the item itself. You know, this t-shirt, is it made of cotton or is it made of, you know, organic cotton? Um, as we think about the disposal of items and looking towards recyclability, RAIN RFID can, for example, provide instructions for how to recycle individual mm -hmm. items. So in the case of coming back to um, textile apparel garments, RAIN RFID can provide more accurate and more detailed garment compositions. And this is really important because that helps the sorter determine how that garment should be recycled. And it's a problem today. So for example, Circle Economy found that those composition labels that exist today on garments, 40% of them are inaccurate. And what that means is that it can result in the textile recycling uh, that is low quality and low yield. So Rain RFID can help with that. It can provide more accurate garment composition it can also provide more detail saying, hey, this is a, you know, multi-material garment. It, it involves not just co uh, cotton pieces, but it also mm -hmm. involves some polyester pieces. Mm -hmm. Plus, RAIN RFID can further automate the processes that are currently used by recycling sorters. And we see this as eventually being something that consumers could even be able to read the tags using portable devices to understand how to properly dispose of items at the end of their life. Mm -hmm. Also, very important, I think the key here is just communication or the transportation of information. Um, if, if I think about myself, of course, um, um, you are not always 100% aware of what could be the best next step. So this is just um, where maybe some kind of um, of sustainable process is lost because of information. And this um, this specific situation is strengthened just by giving the um, by giving more information. Yeah. Agreed. Absolutely. Um, so. Thank you very much for these insights um, about RAIN RFID and sustainability. You named a lot of, of potential, but also use cases that are already working on making the world more sustainable. But you also explained that there's even more in the future um, that is coming up. But there's also um, a way you were already going. Um, so let's talk 
about the partner network. So you already mentioned Impinch is 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 building up on the partner network. P please help me um, to understand it. So the, the first question is, what is so special about the Impinch partner network? We work very closely with our partners to develop solutions that fit their needs. And that includes uh, sustainability priorities in addition to other priorities they might have. We like to invest in long-term R&D partnerships for the betterment of both companies. Okay, okay. And why is partnership important for the innovations? Partnership gives us the ability to move forward rain enabled sustainability among other very innovative solutions. Some of the most exciting opportunities for innovation I see that sit between different companies. And these opportunities can only be discovered and opened and worked on when those two companies come together. They share information. They're able to discover those opportunities together that sit between them, you share resources share knowledge in order to realize those opportunities. So for example, with Prima 1D, they had a vision for an embedded textile tag and they needed a tag chip that would work with their innovative antenna design. So together, Prima 1D and Impinge came up with this specific vision of how that tag chip would work with their innovative antenna design. And that created a new product that was launched earlier this year by Prima 1D. Impinge is very focused on sustainability and we love being able to find partner organizations with sustainability as a shared value. All right. Um, I definitely see the advantage or the reason why Impinch um, choose to operate like this. You're, um, you get a lot of new ideas, new innovations from different kind of partners who come from a different background, who have um, yeah, ideas where, where a different team maybe never thought of. But if you have all these huge partner network, then of course you have a huge input and can work on different solutions, different ideas. Um, yeah, absolutely understandable. You already mentioned one innovation that was developed together with Primo 1D. Um, could you, could you think of another innovation? Yes, yeah, so Prima 1D's eThread is a, is a great example of this. Uh, another partner, HID, has a number of fabric strip and button uh, text, uh, tags that we're excited about. There are uh, lots of other R&D and innovation projects happening. Unfortunately, I, I can't talk about everything, but what I can say is that sustainability is one very important factor that's driving demand for innovation in our industry. Okay, um, understood. I think for um, that's for a lot of us and um, yeah, absolutely understandable. Okay, and that brings us already to the last uh, question block of today. Just to do a small uh, recap, we we talked about, um, or you gave um, your um, expressions of what the future could be, uh, uh, look like, what's in stock, what kind of projects are um, in the pipe at the moment. We talked about the past. We talked especially about RAIN RFID and sustainability. We talked about the partnership concept especially. And I think you mentioned, uh, you, you explained very well, while this is... Um, a huge advantage of Impinch. And now all these different kind of innovations um, can can lead to very, very interesting projects, products and solutions that then help to develop even more sustainable um, 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 uh, solutions. Um, thank you for this great overview. So let's jump into our last question block for today. And again, like in our first block, I have a condition, but this time an even more restrict one than for the first one. I would like to ask you to answer in only one sentence if possible. You're ready? I am ready. All right, here comes the first question. How would you describe the future of wireless IoT technologies? Inevitable. 
And that's because the promise of what we can deliver to society, it's already there. Today's deployments are proving out that promise, which in turn creates more demand as people look back and see that promise bear out. Okay. Here comes number two. How would you describe the change of pace in the IoT industry? It's fast, but Impinge as a company that's on the bleeding edge of innovative technology, it's not fast enough. Okay. That, that's a pretty um, strong statement. Okay. <laughs> um, and the third one, please describe the biggest challenges in the world of wireless IoT industry. There is so much possibility for innovation. So the challenge we see is prioritizing the opportunities mm. where performance, cost and market need are all in balance. Right. Okay. Um, very good answer. And um, thank you very much for your time. Um, Before we stop, I want to add an also impressive number. So let me name all the exhibitors that are part um, of the exhibition of the Wireless IoT Tomorrow 2023 and also of the partner network. And I would like to invite all um, visit uh, listeners today um, to stop and talk to the Impinge partners um, and to just learn more on how they see um the product solutions landscapes and what the future can can bring so here are the companies apples technologies kane rfid cispa electronics hana technologies hrd global identif idro zimra perfect id tagios tsc printronics biontech primer 1d avery denison and katrine solutions that's an impressive number um definitely so you're well represented Yes, and please go check out their booths. They are doing such exciting work and we are thrilled to be uh, a partner with them. Yeah, and Impinch will not only be represented through their partner network, but they will also um, a very direct contribution. And I'm talking um, especially about the lecture program. There will be um, a special guest from Impinch giving a lecture with the title The Journey to Trillions of Connected Things. And that will be Mr. Chris Diorio. And I would like to invite everybody to come to the first lecture day, that's the 80th of October, for the forum Wireless IoT Technologies at 10 a.m. and to follow the lecture. Megan, thank you very much for your time. Thank you for your great insights, for your answers. And now... I wish you a great Friday and, of course, a happy and relaxing weekend. Thank you, Nicholas, for the opportunity. It's been a real pleasure to speak with you and I wish you a great weekend as well. Thank you. Bye.